We're just getting the newest lines out of the UK where lawmakers are saying uh, that they'll be suspending visitors to Parliament over the concerns over uh, viral transmission. The UK Parliament is closed now to all visitors and the public of virus fears, but that lawmakers in the UK will continue to do their work in Parliament. And of course, the UK has chosen uh, to an extent to take a, a different approach, some say a more relaxed approach. Uh, following what they has, have said is, you know, scientific kind of expert advice that they've received. How is that playing out in terms of where you are? Well, that's right. So the UK government has decided that rather than trying to stop the spread of the virus, they need to manage the flow of it and slow it down. So what you get perhaps is a longer period of infection, but a more manageable one where you don't get the kind of peaks that you're seeing in places like Italy, for example, where cases are now just under 30,000. Uh, so Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister today, coming out and saying that people should avoid social contact, they should avoid going to their, their neighbourhood pub, uh, to restaurants and avoid social gatherings. But at the same time, uh, British schools are still open and the government is yet to say whether there'll be a decision on closing them. And even though Parliament is closed, to visitors, lawmakers are still there and the business of Parliament will continue. Uh, what we're seeing, of course, is some criticism of the UK government for that uh, and perhaps for reacting slower or, or with greater caution than other countries. And right now, the challenge for Boris Johnson is to walk some of that back without avoiding the perception that he perhaps miscalculated in just how serious the threat was going to be to the UK because that could create some political risk for him. But certainly some questions now coming into the UK and some criticism at home of him here in London uh, for his handling of things so far. Roz, what are we seeing in terms of multilateral action? Because we have seen the, G7, the G7 talking, the IMF also pledging some lending capacity. Well, that's right. You're seeing this effort now to send a message, be it via central banks or the IMF, as you noted, or Group of Seven leaders, uh, to say that they're in this together and they'll do whatever it takes together to mitigate the economic impact of this. Um, but equally, we saw that the U.S. president had to be pushed into having a call today with his fellow leaders from the G7 uh, and coming off the back of some tension with Europe over the initial move to put a travel ban on travellers from Europe. Um, and now in the U.K., we can see, of course, it going its own way. So there's a sense that perhaps the U.S. and the U.K. have underplayed uh, the risk from this and the extent of this and are now turning around and telling their publics, actually, you do really need to worry. And that just also creates the sense that perhaps leaders aren't rowing entirely together globally on all of this um, and very much taking uh, different paths in some cases. And so when they're trying, on the one hand, to send a message that they, to the markets and to investors and to companies that they're serious about working together, to mitigate the economic impact, uh, there is some doubt coming into that, and that's perhaps also why you are seeing some of that extreme market reaction overnight in response. 